Ina tata uh, koe hui mai nei tinei rangi ki te hui topa tua rima a uh, kakaraki e tata. Kia hura te mar marino kia papa 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 ina mai te moana hei ara hei mari ma tata i te rangi nei aroha tu aroha aroha mai tata kia tata tu tu ri papa maua kia tina hei me hui tai ki. Welcome um, you all to, uh, to join us for the fifth web webinar series. We welcome um, your partai. Um, you can enter your questions in the Q&A section and Leone will put these to Ngarupi, our guest um, today, and uh, at the end of her presentation. We are no tēnei te mihi atu kia te koutou, pa tuki te rākau kia koe, Professor Leone Pihama. A tēnā tātou. Uh, tūtahi tōtoko o te mihi kia koutou katoa i hui hui mai nei i tēnei wā. Um, <clears throat> welcome everyone back to uh, this, the fifth uh, webinar for He Waka Eke Noa. Uh, for those of you who are new in joining the webinar, uh, what we've been doing is a series of online webinars from the project He Waka Eke Noa, which is a project funded by the MV Endeavour Fund and hosted by Ngā Waiata Tui, uh, research Institute at Unitech. And we're looking at uh, continuing some, from some earlier work that we've been doing as a research group around Māori cultural frameworks in terms of family violence prevention and intervention. Uh, it's a multi-method uh, project, including a range of whakawhiti kōrero or um, discussions and interviews, a range of regional hui that we've run, uh, and an online survey that surveyed around 1,500 uh, of our people around their views uh, around family, family violence prevention and um, also to look at levels of prevalence both uh, in the past year and lifetime and, and, and to get some information around the happenings and, and, and what was happening for Fano over COVID. So um, today we're really um, beginning We've done the first uh, few seminars really around the projects and uh, detail themselves some of the, uh, some of the initial findings, the original findings from the project that we're at at the moment. And we're moving into a series of uh, webinars that are really around uh, practitioner work, both here in Aotearoa and internationally. And we begin today's here at home in Aotearoa with uh, Ngāropi Raumati Cameron uh, from Tutamawahine or Taranaki. Uh, and so um, Ngāropi's talk today is titled Through Recipro Reciprocity, Gifts Are Transformed. And she's going to be talking about decolonizing healing and transform transformation and transformative ways of being as a journey rather than as a destination. Ngāropi is a foundational member and director of Tutamawahini o Tadamaki. Uh, she's operated and worked as a senior domestic violence facilitator and educator. Um, she's worked in social services for over 30 years and has been highly committed, particularly to the well being and to liberation and to tinodanga tinatanga and whānau well being within Taranaki. But it's also been a part of wider national developments, including um, being a member of Te Ropu and being a part of developing uh, Māori views within Te Ropu and Māori perspectives in terms of the uh, strategy, national strategy for family violence and sexual violence prevention. She's been uh, engaged in a whole range of approvals panels and uh, other national panels uh, working in the area, really with her aim to transform um, and to be a part of the wider aspiration of Māori well-being and whānau hapu iwi, hapuri and community well-being. So nō reira ngā rupi nō mai ki tēnei wāhanga kei a koe te rākau. Tēnā kūrua, Leone, rau ko Heri Aroha. Tēnā koutou katoa, e ngā hau e whā, ngā paimanga. Tēnā tāta katoa. Kia ora, kia ora, Leonie. Thank you for that uh, generous introduction. Anyway, uh, ko wai ahau, ko uh, he uri ahau no te maunga te tohea, ko taranaki te maunga, ko ngā te mutunga te iwi, ko kai tangata te hapu, ko raumati me mātuku uku whānau, ko ngā ropi ahau. 
Um, uh, I'm going to uh, just going to get straight into it and just share the and share the screen and um, and I'm just going to recap on previous kōrero from our previous speakers from Professor uh, Linda um, Leone and Poe um, and from Shirley. Um, and then I'm going to just uh, briefly give you a, um, what I think is a, a good practice question to reflect on. And it's a question that was put to me about 30 years ago. Um, and then I'm just going to show a practice uh, tool that um, can support how we can apply tūpuna knowledge, tūpuna gifts, the koha that they've given to us. Um, So Linda, um, you, those of you who saw before, Linda, you may recall this is the uh, Kaupapa Māori principles. Um, I'll just call it a wheel. So Linda reminded us what Kaupapa Māori framework is for and what it is not. And it is not for deciding or describing a problem. A Kaupapa Māori framework is for action. It's for living. Um, it supports and explains a way of being within a culture, within our culture. Um, the framework is for thinking and organizing our thinking, to help us organize our thinking, and it also helps with context. And so there are reasons why it is not about describing a problem. Um, because embedded in the Kaupapa Māori principles uh, for engagement, uh, are solutions and there are avenues for creative thinking and creativity. They also hold uh, an enormous space for possibilities and Linda outlined some of those possibilities. Uh, there are possibilities for healing, for redress, you know, compensation, uh, restoration, uh, repatriation, and reconciliation. So these are all positive. Uh, they are all forward moving aspects. Um, so the Kopapa Māori is an action, forward moving, and it offers possibilities. You know, another model, a Western model, you know, it might actually refer to them as strength or even strength based practice, even. Okay, so Linda pointed out that the He Oranga Ngāko project added a layer behind the Kaupapa Māori principles and that this layer has a practice application layer within it and it is in that practice layer the Fano order indicators for well-being reside. Okay, so I'm just moving through a couple of models here. So at no time um, did Linda talk about or say that the Kopapa Māori principles say it's okay to hurt or disrespect people? Now, Leone um, layered out multiple avenues um, of Matauranga within just 10 Wakatoki, 10. And we literally have thousands available to us. Um, and I mean thousands because we have them as individuals, we have them as whānau, uh, as, as well as aspects of hapū iwi, and as a, as a Māori nation. So, and I always think, you know, um, um, our Māori nation, we are, we, are, we are rich beyond our imaginations. If we um, just look at Whakatoki. Um, so within those 10 uh, Whakatoki, um, then we spoke to us of values and values embedded in tūpuna tonga and those values are values that speak to um, our sort of compassion and empathy, sanctity of relationships, the impact of tūpuna, mokopuna relationships and uh, how that can journey through the generations, about the care, nurturing, safety, and protection of our tamariki and mokopuna, 
And Sokotoki spoke to the multiple roles we all carry throughout our lives and how they change at different aspects through our lives. And there was a reminder that we are both uh, divine and human. Um, as they spoke to our collectivism and, um, you know, one of the things that I thought about in, relate, in relation to that one, I just thought, you know, government departments have got a cheek to be talking to us. Uh, Māori about collective impact and it's unfortunate that we didn't push back uh, in another way around how, how that they spoke and laid out collective impact. We know about collective impact, we just didn't get organised. So there are whakatogi that spoke to systems that uh, ensured balance, that emphasised giving and sharing rather than taking. We're not saying it's not, it's not we're, and we're, they're not saying it's not okay to receive or to, to take but the emphasis um, in the well-being aspect is on reciprocity. Um, they spoke about how to thrive within culture and that te reo uh, is the connector to all things Māori. There's no way we can move away from it or we should try to move away from it. And we were also reminded that, that there is honour and struggle. Um, the Pakatoki spoke to, it encouraged us and laid out for us that by actively rejecting colonial patriarchal structures that have undermined Manawahine, we make a significant contribution to reaffirming Manawahine, Manatani, Manatamata, the sanctity of all human beings. And they also um, spoke to. Oh, well, just laid out how we could successfully respond um, in a manner that is that aligns with and is consistent with tikanga. Nowhere did any of those whakatauki say, you know, lie down and be a colonial diplomat. Uh, nor did they say that it's not okay to address or respond to abusive or disrespectful attitudes or behaviour from individuals, from groups, or from the Crown state sector. Uh, Shirley, um, Shirley spoke to the Hewaka Ikenoa National Strategy and using the, and showed the Te Pai uh, order as an, an analyzing tool. And she reminded us that every number, every statistic is a person and standing by every person is a household. Um, Fano, a hapu, an iwi, a hokapapa. And she also alluded to a growing awareness by Fano of Crown state violence and its daily impact on Fano well being. And Professor Sir Potema, you know, what an amazing koha uh, that he gave, what an amazing koha he gave to us um, by bringing forward his queer for us to meet. Um, and also, we could see her generous koha to us. Well, actually, it's a koha to the nation, to the Māori nation, and actually to the whole nation, uh, that her koha was him. Um, and at no time did I hear him say he was treated harshly for being a hotutu, because uh, I'm sure he was. He's a, he was a Māori boy. So he was how to do. Um, you know, he wasn't treated harshly for being inquisitive or noisy in the nahiri by any of his elders. And so from this, we can see that Tupuna endowed us with great gifts. But what we have to, what we have to understand um, is that their gift is only half of a gift. It's half of a truth. Uh, the other half is that the gift is insufficient. It's not enough. Sorry, um, Professor Paul. So the responsibility, but the responsibility doesn't lie with our tupuna alone. The other half belongs to us. Okay? We must participate. We must be active. To, uh, and we have to participate in our culture, in our communities, to activate and transform 
the gift. So it's now our responsibility to do the mahi, to show gratitude, to honour tūpuna efforts, to, yeah, to honour tūpuna efforts. They did the best they could at that time. It's our responsibility to claw back our birthright, and that's to be fully in charge and in control of our lives. And it's our responsibility to apply their gifts as only we can, it's you and me, us, because they are our gifts. They are Māori gifts gifted to Mokopuna Māori from the past into the now into the future. And we can't give them away. And we can't give them away until we have done our bit and transformed them. And this is why we need to think a little more clearly about the gifting of names to park our organisations and uh, the way government agencies are taking our names and applying them to uh, racist structures. But I think um, Professor Poe Temara has um, he's done more than his half um, in relation to the gift. He's done more than half of transforming what he was gifted from his elders. And I'm sure he has more that he wants to achieve and um, contribute. So one of the reflections that I had for me uh, in listening to the previous uh, speakers uh, was the memory that um, that came to me was a question that was given to me by a, a very wise queer from Ngāti Kahumunu, um, Wairarapa, Dr Janice Wen. It's probably about three decades ago now. She asked me, what is my practice within the, within, what is my practice within the context of Māori knowledge? And, you know, I had an initial um, reaction where I probably stopped breathing for a minute. And, and I just thought, what the hey? You know, uh, but what came forward very quickly was, of course, cultural safety. And um, Eri Hapati Ramsden. So Janice was asking me, how was I, how do I apply what I know to be culturally safe practice? So I'm just asking you to keep that question in mind because it's, is this is a, an excellent uh, practice question for practitioners and uh, it's a question to reflect on. How do you practice within the context of Māori knowledge? So I'm going to show uh, six relatively common values um, that have all been touched on by previous speakers and how they can be utilized um, by practitioners uh, and utilized by whānau that we work with. Whānau who are recovering from the effects of colonial um, trauma, so historical trauma, intergenerational trauma. So I'm asking you to be mindful again that the major portion of a recovery journey is to heal from the intergenerational effects of colonial domination and forced dispossession of our homelands and our economic wealth, our homelands or our economic wealth. And to be clear about the institutional racist cement that holds um, that stuff in place. So, um, uh, here you can see there's again a, a couple of wheels, we call them the values in Pana or oil values. Um, and hopefully you will see how just six values, and like, as I said, relatively common values can be utilized, and how the six Pana or Pana order well being indicators are, are interconnected. So, um, you know, to disturb the peace or um, to disturb or ruin the peace of a Fano, you know, it's extremely abusive uh, and destructive. And, um, and it's often deliberate. So please, that's something else to keep in mind. Uh, I want you to keep in mind the three aspects from the second task force report on Fano Māori violence. That's the second report that was commissioned by Tariana and it was edited by uh, Tamari Kruja. It is available online. So the three aspects I want you to keep in mind um, as well. And they um, that came from that report that one, the first is to dispel the illusion 
that violence within whānau Māori is normal, because it is not. Uh, to, the second is to remove the opportunity for it to occur. And the third is transformative practice. And as we only have said, we know that transformation is a journey. It's a journey, it's not a destination. So there's the two wheels on the, the darker side holds the six values and on the, the lighter side, the flip side holds the whānau order um, uh, indicators of well-being. Um, so this, uh, this um, screen here, you can just see is the uh, whānau order, um, not sorry, is the, the six values. And so um, it's in three, you can see each segment is in three sections and the, the value is in the center. Um, the next layer is a values marker or an indicator. And the outer layer offers an example, a suggestion, an uplifting, a mana enhancing message, or quite simply it states a fact. So we just break that down further. And this is, this is three of those six values. Um, and we start, if you read from right to left at Wairua, um, you know, this, just, just this section alone should highlight um, the total differences in uh, a Māori worldview and a Pākehā worldview. So it's a spiritual heartbeat and it's a core of Māori wellbeing. Uh, and it is about reclaiming the divinity of tamariki mokopuna and the sanctity of woman. And it goes, uh, the outer talk, uh, talks about, you know, learn and teach whānau karakia to each other. And there is a, an example of a relatively easy um, karakia. Well, not easy, not so easy. Anyway, um, but it's a taranaki one, ke uramai a hau ora, a hau kaha, a hau mai a ki runga ki raro, ki runga ki waho, hiri, hiri, hau pai māre di. So, wairua as a practice, is the first level on which any of us should be engaging with anybody. And certainly with whānau, this is the first level on which you engage. And, you know, uh, it's, it's natural uh, for a lot that is lost. Uh, these are karakia and a conversation about wairua is where, um, you know, our ngāko Māori resonates. Uh, and karakia is a good place to start. The Papa talks about the power and strength of our genealogy and it interconnects absolutely everything. And, you know, and it cements our identity and strengthens our sense of belonging. Um, and uh, what better place to start than Pipiha? You know, this is a chance to talk to Fano about belonging, about learning, and about teaching Pipiha. So Hoka Papa is a tool for engagement. We're talking about practice and whakapono. Uh, and I can't stress the importance of this value in relation to um, a person practicing, uh, practitioners, because it talks it's about a self monitoring, a self discipline, and an accountability to all. So, this is this whakapono connects the truth. It's about honesty and it's about integrity, it's about our ethical behavior. Um, and it does talk about compassion and empathy. Uh, which supports understanding if we if uh, we're lacking in compassion and empathy for what we're dealing with then uh, we're lacking in, in um, understanding equally aroha. we can't talk about aroha. Um, so this is about being ticker and so you know I always think about um, to kind my things like that so don't be you know don't be um don't be ticker on your timesheet or things like that, or what you're doing in the community when you're meant to be doing stuff, okay? Uh, because you're going to end up in the tickle. It might be warm and comfortable for a while, but actually uh, it does smell, people know. So, you know, it's also about uh, standing up and uh, have, and standing up and being counted for your, what you're saying and for your attitudes and your opinions. Um, and this is the the other three um, values. Go to, if we go to Manaki Tanga, you can see that. Um, you know, I always think that this is a healthy 
Māori question, we've got a few healthy Māori questions. I'm not talking about a Māori health question, it's a healthy Māori question. How do people know you have mana? And if you ask Fano uh, this question, they will tell you. They might not have thought about it like that before, but they will talk to you about it. Um, how do people know that um, you have mana? And it's by the way you treat people. Mana, uh, you know, mana ki te tangata. And then it uh, just gives a very simple um, example up there about, you know, doing things together and encouraging us to support and care for tamariki and elders in their daily lives. The te reo rangatira is, again, you know, this is an uplifting uh, message. You know, even, uh, you know, when te reo rangatira is in the whare, rangatira live there. Yeah, it is a very mana enhancing. And there are places we can start. Why not? We've got to start somewhere. Why not start at Upper Māori, Poor Māori? And uh, of course, tikanga, all values come together uh, with tikanga around uh, correct attitude, correct behaviour, correct actions, correct thoughts. And it certainly brings into um, the frame around violence free whānau and violence free whare. So, you know, just address uh, yelling and um, swearing. And, Hurting, hurting children. So those are um, six common values that you know I think offer a balanced starting point. A balanced starting point uh, for Fano uh, and for practitioners because these are these are Fano tools. We get to use them as as practitioners, but these are things that are given to the family, um, and we can we can align. <laughs> Well, I'm sure many of you could align several whakatauki um, uh, in each of those segments. You know, where would you put Aroha Ki Te Tangata? Yeah. Where would you put He Tupuna, He Mokopuna? Because uh, they easily put him. Where would you put um, uh, Ki Tō Rauro, Ki Takurara, Ka Oro Ai Te Iwi? Uh, he Waka Ike Noa. These are all wakatogi that we have uh, heard or talked about that can be put anywhere in any of these six values system. So it's a combination of a value, uh, what it can mean, an example, and things can be slotted into it. So on the other side of um, that wheel is the Fano order indicators for wellbeing. You know, this, and this really offers uh, an opportunity to be talking to family um, about uh, whānau order, what it actually is in relation to being a, a, a Māori national plan of action. And so all of our whānau would have heard this word, whānau order, but uh, nowhere is there a really clear explanation given to them about how it impacts on them and their lives. Okay. I have to say that it's a good quality card. Um, it's, diff it's difficult to bend, so I make quite good frisbees. Yeah. But I don't care if they use families, I don't care if the whānau use them as frisbees, uh, because at some point somebody's going to look at them. Yeah. So on the flip side, uh, we've got the whānau order wellbeing indicators. So this offers an opportunity to call it all to whānau about whānau order as a national plan, okay? So each, again, each, each segment lines up with the values side. So wairua on the other side is wairua in the value corridor. Uh, the whānau order indicator is uh, the next uh, section, segment. And the outer segment offers a direction. It offers a um, suggestion or a mana enhancing message. Or again, it just states the fact, okay? So, if we, so reading right to left this time, so just keep in line with the, the values one. So wairua has been lined up with healthy Fano lifestyles. Um, and the message there is and for us to, um, to reflect and think about, of course, is to promote well-being, strong foundations for behavior and relationships, and to reclaim and normalize our tūpuna knowledge at tūpuna Tonga so that they become intergenerational. Just be inspired because it's, the stuff they left out is inspiring. Uh, Hukapapa has been lined up with full whānau participation in society and uh, we're encouraging people to plan and focus on what they want their whānau future to be. 
challenge the status quo, break new ground and be creative. And this is a fact. Decile is not destiny. And Hokapuno has been lined up with whānau cohesion, is to keep connected across the generations, you know, and nurturing respectful relationships and honouring, um, uh, ensuring safety of the young and the elderly at the end of the spectrum. And that we can craft our own solution. Um, So this is the second half, and again reading from right to left. Manaki Tanga has been lined up with whānau economic security and successful involvement in wealth creation. And this is about planning and strategizing our way out of difficulties. Because we end up in, the, you know, in, in difficult times, but we don't often plan how to, how to address it. And if we can, there are some away for that rainy day because there is always there is always going to be a rainy day. And again, we're encouraging that trans and just stating that transformation occurs through choice. And you and we invite people, you're invited to create an alternative future. It's just um, don't give up. Don't give up. Okay. Tupuna didn't give up. Why should we? So to real Rangatira. Uh, again, connects everything. And this has been lined up with confident whānau participation in Te Māori. And it connects uh, iwi, it connects culture, connects community, it connects age and ability related activities. Um, you know, it's about whānau hapu, it's about cultural things, it's about business, it's about sport, it's about uh, mātauranga Māori. And um, it's an encouragement to be proud be proud to be Māori. We are a limited edition. There are so few of us in the world. You can almost count us on one hand. No, no. But, you know, we're countable. <laughs> There's not a lot of us. So we are a limited edition. And, um, hey, enjoy life. No? Mene, mene, smile. Anyway, and the final one there is tikanga, which has been lined up with whānau self-management. So I just think that I think that's a very sensible place to line up whānau self-management. Um, and it talks about supporting whānau leaders because all our whānau have got leaders and we've got leaders in different sections of the whānau who are good at doing different things and we know who to go to. So it is about supporting whānau leaders to focus on their skills, on other skills, on gifts and assets that members possess and to um, help each other out, to keep them safe, okay? Maintain generous engagement with everybody and share your gifts. Because one of the things is that we don't, um, we've all got gifts, but we don't, um, often we don't know what they are, but others might. And so we encourage people to um, help people grow those gifts. Okay, you know, once we're, once we're installed, are uh, gardeners. Okay. Again, there are multiple whakatogi, e purako and kiwaha that can be fitted into each of these segments. Um, and I, I've just put these up here because all of those values, those six values, each can be placed into a section within um, these segments as well. In fact, several can be put in each one. Um, I'm just quite aware of time. The only, how's our time going? Because there is a planning tool, but I can leave that for another time. Um, yeah. <laughs> Another five or ten minutes. Okay. So I'll just go back to that then. Yeah. You know, uh, if we look at Kopapa, oh, we would look look at top. I would put what I would put Wairua in Tonga Tuku Iho. Okay. Um, te Reo Rangatira in Ako Māori, culturally preferred pedagogy. Te Reo Rangatira, I would put Whakapuno. Um, ke Pikiaki Nga Raru Raru. Te kainga, I would put manaki tanga, uh, ata, uh, I would put tikanga at ata, the principle of um, respectful relationships, and I would put uh, wakapapa at kopapa, the principle of collective philosophy. And um, again, because there's seven there, I would put manaki tanga again under whānau, the principle of extended whānau. And then on the other side, 
um, kati te patunako, stop the blows to their ngako Māori, I would put wairua and support intergenerational, I would put whakapapa, whakapungo around acknowledge their pain, um, manaki tanga around helping to build their whara, whare of support and I will put tikanga around support kaupapa, um, Māori approaches to practice and uh, te reo rangatira around honour Māori aspirations of self-determination. So that's just a quick roundup. Others will put different things in there, but um, it's, it's your practice. It's what makes sense to you and how you can share that with whānau. So uh, some of the things that have been eaten away uh, from, uh, from our whānau knowledge base is made accessible and understandable so that they can then uh, start to build their own whare of support and create their own whare of shelter and extend it out in that way. The values in the whānau order tool are effective. they used with, um, this is another tool, this one here is, uh, is about what matters most. There's just three simple questions there. It works brilliantly with children. It works with whānau. These are for families to use together. It's what matters most. Um, why does this matter? And what do you do together now? Or what can you do together now? And again, it's in six segments or three sections. Um, so there can be multiple things, six things written on this circle that can change, get wiped out, and other things can be put in as things progress. And the other one that I'll just show you is, um, well, uh, the, we just refer to this as um, the S planning tool. It is, it's all about S's. Um, and again, it's in uh, six uh, um, segments and I, this one's got four sections to it. So this is about, you know, it's, it, this is a planning tool. It, um, it's got a magnet, magnetic strip on the back of it and it can go on the fridge. Um, a, pen, a pen goes with it and it can be written on and it can be wiped off as things are achieved or as whānau uh, move through them. So, you know, um, if we want to get something sorted, is what do you need to get sorted right now? And they can put that there. Uh, and then the self-determining part is what can they do and what do they need help with? And those things get entered in there. And, and you know, um, how will you know if it's been uh, successful? How will you know it's been sorted out? And they put their, their response in there. And um, the last one is about sustainability, is how can this be sustained and how will you... Um, it to make sure that it is sustainable. So this, you know, the planning tool um, has been really important because, and it's, it has to be included in absolutely everything that we do when working with whānau, because one of the things that we've, um, that has happened is that we've stopped planning. Um, and what the example we always use is, you know, our tūpuna, we did not get to Aotearoa by accident. It was not an accident. They didn't cook. Captain Cook was an accident. You know, our tūpuna did not get here by accident. It was planned. It was street changing. And they knew where they were going. Uh, and we have to reclaim those aspects uh, of our life as well. Um, yeah, a lot of times we just caught, you know, stop planning. Uh, we don't save. Uh, we can't save. And there are Consequently, there are historical reasons why this stuff happens um, concerning colonial trauma, uh, but we're still often trapped in the quick fix. We're trapped in the here and now uh, and often instant gratification. Uh, and, um, you know, I think we understand, we know why this is like it is, but it, it is about changing. And we know people want to change. We deal with families who want to change. I just want some support to help work their way through some of that stuff. And these are just simple uh, tools to help make that happen. Um, they are always about um, addressing the violent disruption of colonization and its fallout on us. Um, and uh, it's another story. Uh, anyway, so that's just a quick um, sorry, quick roundup on just some of the practice tools that we're using in relation to values and how they come together and how they can be interconnected uh, and used very effectively um, 
with, with, with whānau, and not just with adults. These are used with uh, tamariki and mokopuna as well. They have fun, yeah. That's me at the moment. I could, maybe I should talk about that. Everybody knows, you know, we've got the, the power and control wheels. Um, we tarted them up um, and uh, nobody's allowed to photocopy this stuff. Yeah, get the originals, we'll give them to you. Um, you know, uh, how violence affects children. Uh, caring for our tamariki and nurturing. Whoops, there we go. But what we made, what we did was a, a partnership wheel, uh, which uh, can be used in, um, uh, you know, when looking at how things are in the home, at relationships, can be used within hapu iwi. Um, I think Glenn, Glenn successfully used it in relation to addressing um, treaty breaches uh, within uh, their, their hapu, and he um, uh, used those power and control wheels to point this out. So this is a partnership wheel that, that we have done um, and it can be, um, I think it should be used with when dealing with all government departments, something like it or, um, yeah, anyway. So that's just one of the other little little things we, we, we play with. Anyway, are we okay to leave that there, Leonie? Goodbye. If you wanna unshare your screen, Nalopi, and... Uh, we're good, we're good. We've got a uh, first question. I really want to invite people to put uh, questions into the Q&A uh, if, if you have any questions in particular. So this one, uh, you talked about being proud to be Māori. We're a limited edition. We're both yes. divine and human. Can you share what brings you the ultimate Māori joy in your mahi and in your kainga to help combat those rain-filled colonial days? Well, that's a big question. Um, which, what, what brings? Well, because mostly, um, well, I do, I do get a, a lot of joy from seeing things progress and seeing things happen with families. Um, our, seeing plans being done and past being done, uh, but I also spend a lot of time being bitched as well. I mean, being uh, annoyed uh, about um, what's happening at the moment. Um, I think what gives me the most joy, of course, is the tamariki mokuna. Um, uh, I enjoy uh, working in an intergenerational um, situation with Fano members uh, and um, seeing that wider Fano members are becoming involved and they're getting more of an understanding about uh, what has happened here in Taranaki and the uniqueness of what's happened. Yeah. And, um, you know, every day I just think, well, uh, it's not, you know, um, it's, it's, it's another day and I'm here to enjoy it. Yeah. I think it's a bit of a, a vague roundabout answer, but, you know, uh, and uh, at the moment, one of the, is a com I've just been a little folk artist. I do some painting uh, with a combination of uh, yes. um, all cultures, really, yeah. So it's doing some of those things for myself. Yeah. Kia ora. Uh, so Gendi Tekepa has asked, I worked as a case study for the Department of Corrections. Am I able to source some uh, copies of those resources that you shared? So I did put in the chat that uh, to contact Tutan Wahine, there's a contact through your website. Um, so is that an appropriate way for people to come to you around some of the wheels, accessing some of the wheels? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, we do. Uh, we've got them on, we have, um, and we always have resources available when we attend, um, uh, you know, when we have, um, well, when we get back to them again as community court or and conferences, you know, we've got a wānanga happening uh, here on their kākara in July. Um, which is a Taranaki Māori research. And those things like those resources are always available. You can contact through the website or through um, uh, our receptionist uh, just from the email. Okay. I think um, the email, we could put the email up if you could grab it. Um, 
Bernadette, it's at charlotte at tutamawahine.org.nz um, and email her. The thing that we do ask us though is that actually, um, yeah, it's fine to use the, the wheels, don't photocopy them, use the product mm. and the product is, is, is for kaumahi to use but it's actually for whānau to mm. be given. Mm. Um, yeah. So, of course, we, we're more than happy to um, provide those things. We might charge a fee. We'll cover the cost of printing. Yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, very much available. The um, Not just the values wheels and the whānau order, but also the, the, the planning tools. Yeah. And the Kaupapa Māori wheels are a part of a bigger package of resources that, and I'll put the link up for that yep. as well. Uh, he pātai no from Lizzie. What's your favourite whakatauki, especially for sharing with tamariki and rangatahi? Um, well, I think my um, favourite whakatauki would, would be with, tam uh, with uh, tamariki and uh, rangatahi is ahako he iti he yeah, you know, because, you know, there's a lot um, within that, you know, that, that uh, I hope he iti de te kōrero, but, you know, he nui te whakaaro, and the things that can be put into um, into that, yeah. I think that's quite lovely, actually. Mm. One of the questions that came up in the Whakataiki presentation that I did earlier, uh, Ngāropi, was around... Um, some examples of how you use that in practice. So if you're working with a particular whānau or tamaiti and you have that whakatauki, how would you kind of ground that and how would you give some way of having whānau think about it? How would you talk about that? Well, it would, of course it depends on what's happening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's happening where you're at with, um, uh, with, with what you're doing and that. But... Um, you know, if, if, if you are doing something and it come, that comes up for you, I wouldn't go into somewhere with a, with a whānau or with that in mind, but if I'm with them or I'm in a, in a group and that comes up, you know, it comes up from your ngāko, well, he caught it all. Uh, because it does happen, you know, he wairua. There are always um, greater forces at work. It's not never just about you as a practitioner or the whānau there, there are, there are always other forces. There are always other energies in that room and you should respond to um, that uh, whakatauki like that that comes forward. But you've got to, you've got to have some in your uh, repertoire as well. You, you, you know, uh, don't wait for the tupu to pluck something out of you if it ain't there. You know, it's like um, trying to get a car to go and there's no petrol in it, it won't happen. All the karaki in the world won't make it go. You've got to put something in there. So in some ways that links back to your question that you posed to us to reflect on earlier from Fire Janice yeah. around how our practice is grounded and shaped uh, and within Matauranga Māori. So what, what, you're, what you're saying in part there is that actually the more Matauranga Māori and tikanga tools we have ourselves, the more able we are for those to come forward when they're needed. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, I am saying that, but I'm also saying that um, you have to be doing the stuff with Sano. It's, it's not enough to be studying it. Be, how the knowledge becomes embedded or the new knowledge comes out from you and you can connect it into the things that you know is by actually doing some stuff, by doing it and by trying it. Um, and it can be can be scary, and we do make mistakes. We do make mistakes, but that we just we have to know when to step back to keep our own mana intact, and to help our rebuild um, others to keep their mana intact. Yeah. So I'm yeah. kind of pulling on some earlier questions that came up to those of us who are more the kind of researchers and theorists in this mm -hmm. team. Uh, one of them was around. Um, 
you know, if you're not fluent, your Māori practitioner, not fluent in Te Reo Māori, you know, can you be operating in this kind of a Māori space was one of them, you know, and so, um, and how do you operate in that? So I guess what are your reflections to those people who are starting the journey, I guess, and bringing this maturanga and tikanga and they you know, for themselves uh, in terms of their, you know, their own practice. What would be your kind of reflection or your, I guess, I'm trying to avoid the word advice um, for people on that journey? Well, start, start the journey. Start the first step, take a deep breath and uh, cut a <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, there's, there's, lots of, there's lots of things that we have to do, uh, multiple things all the time, because we're also parents, we're also mothers and fathers, and we're also grandparents, we're uncles and aunties, and we've got a myriad of other things to do as well. But it's all part and parcel of being Māori. So, you know, again, I think about this stuff, it's work. Um, part of our life is life part of our work you know it, it is we become and we are and we grow into um we transform i suppose those parts of ourselves that are transformable in what we and what we're doing in, in our practice mahi yeah i don't know if that makes sense i'm not sure it makes sense to me yeah well it makes sense. i guess that's what you were saying too earlier, like, that, you know, COVID Māori and Mātauranga Māori for us is also a part of the journey, right? Like there's no end destination. When Poe was speaking in his webinar uh, and when Linda's spoken, you know, they talk about this kind of ongoing Mātauranga. Yeah. I mean, in Daukawa, they were talking about that kind of spectrum, right? Like you never reach the end of the journey no, in Mātauranga no. Māori. We're constantly on journey, yeah. like transformation. Right. Yeah, we're never too young to start and we're never too old to keep going, um, yeah, to learn more. And I, and I think it's, um, I think one of the, the healthiest things for me as a practitioner and for um, the organisation has been is that we have had um, strong elders who were, uh, you know, who were well, native speakers to start with. Um, that were also accomplished in Te Pākehā. And, yeah, they took on re-educating us, educating us. We also took on um, teaching them about decolonisation and decolonising. Uh, and so we had some strong elders around us, and uh, it's a must. The interesting thing of them now is that we've moved into being those elders. We're moving into being those elders because they've all gone. But we have the privilege of having talked to people who knew you know, and then who knew the elders from the 40s and then who actually knew to deal with them and other elders who knew things like that. So we've got that continuity as well. Mm. Um, yeah, and also within our own uh, tribal area and um, also within our name and the whakapapa connections. Uh, they all add um, value, I suppose. Um, they add knowledge. And they also add a, a layer of uh, noho puku, being our, um, an area of being sit quietly, uh, be humble, um, watch and learn. Yeah. We do have another question, but I want to leave it for my final question because it's kind of a little bit fun. Um, but I want to just maybe give you an opportunity when you were talking about that, the history in Tabnaki. Um, if you could maybe give us a little bit of background on the name of Tutamuahine o Tabanaki, just so people can get that context. Oh, right. Okay. Um, well, the name Tutamuahine o Tabanaki was gifted to us uh, from our Queen um, Auntie Marge, Makarina Raupupa, and Dr. Huirangi Waikiripudu, because they saw that we were uh, doing the mahi that they saw their queer and their elders doing. And um, which, of course, relates us back to um, to Parihaka and the Paro of Parihaka, and uh, what our the prophets Tuhukaka uh, and Te or Rongomai um, said to the remaining women when the men were taken, uh, e tu te wa te kuri. and so that um, 
that is for women to carry on, you know, and um, fill the all the duties that uh, were, you know, that void that has been left by um, the men being being taken away, being stolen actually. Um, and so there's it's the interconnectedness to 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 that. You know, one of my um, my aunties, her name, she would name Tamawahine, and we also have the Farikai at uh, Hawaii, uh, named Tamawahine um, as well. Yeah, so there's all those uh, all these other inter interconnecting things uh, around around that name. It's not um, it's not a casual name. It, uh, you know, it's not uh, it carries responsibility, um, and we are always mindful of um, honouring and respecting and maintaining and in fact enhancing and reclaiming the mana of our tupuna kuia um, who, uh, who suffered uh, during that, that time of te pāua. Um, not just te pāua at Parihaka, but the pāua tuatahi was in Waitara um, in your lands, you know, where, where um, in 1860 when Waitara was confiscated, where the first shots were fired that started reverberated throughout the, the, the nation in relation to um, the thefts of all our lands. Yeah, so there's, there's all those sorts of interconnectors as well. So, but we, for ourselves, um, so there's that, and we added on the um, our part around, we are a Tangata Whenua Development and Liberation Service. And then we put our own iwi name into it because we actually we're quite iwi based as well. We're based in town, but we're all iwi people. The majority of us here are iwi. Are iwi. So this is about liberation. Mm. Yeah. So uh, there's so a whātai, yeah. Oh, sorry. There's whātai from Peter Mataida, uh, who's uh, who says tēnā koe te rangatira. One of my whanaunga, Dr. Kitty Dell, who writes about whānau economic security, makes the point that we have lots of other 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 around succession and land shares that can deeply divide us and create intergenerational hurt and trauma uh, when some feel justifiably aggrieved. What's your facado about how we could reconcile and address this without having to resort to lawyers or interfano violence? Right. Mm. Yeah. That, that's a, it, it, that's a, a that's a question that I think probably uh, most of us have asked ourselves at some at some point. It's a huge question, um, and I think it's a slow journey. I think it's a slow journey, but it has to be a consistent journey, and somebody has to lead, and uh, other leaders, yeah, not just one person, uh, but it has to be led by uh, Fano members who are prepared to stick with it, uh, set out a plan. And then stick with it. And I, you know, um, I want to get into my own whānau about this stuff either, because we all suffer from it. Um, and it's designed, it's, it's not an accident that this has happened to our family. Um, but again, it, uh, it's around, and I think it's around Wānanga. Yeah. To me, everything uh, comes back to. Wānanga, either Wānanga as practitioners, with Fano as a Wānanga, or with our own Fano as Wānanga. Yeah. Yeah, I know that there are, um, and one of the things that we did before lockdown, Ngāropi, as you remember with He Oranga Ngāko, is that we went to Hawaii and we spent time with uh, those practitioners in the area of Ho'oponopono or Ho'ho Rongo that we're talking about. And, and I know Peter's in Hawaii and so he'll be aware, um, you know, he'll know this, uh, that corridor that happens there. And one of the things that we came back with after that gathering was, you know, really how do we empower Fano? how do we become empowered as Fano members to actually do exactly what you're saying, to bring back in Fano Hui, to bring back in Wānanga, to bring back in those processes of healing that actually are at whānau level before they escalate out into something else. And I guess the other point around this is that a lot of, you know, this has been created through historical trauma. So what may have become intergenerational whānau trauma is actually created by historical trauma, by land confiscation, Vopatu, all of those things. And that when we remember, you know, Huirangi talking about Vopatu and the notion of Vopatu, that we're continually being 
yes. land confiscation is like being beaten over and over and over again. That's what that mm -hmm. term is. That's why we use it as a term mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. confiscation because it's a constant beating of it's, us. It's never ending. Never until ending. The, that, that, until the fina was returned. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, thank you everyone for those parte. I want to end with this parte um, from an anonymous attendee. Um, if you could take one of our beautiful Māori names back off one of the racist structures or government departments or the likes in this land, which one would be first? And I've got hashtag removal wish list. And if this attendee uh, wants to do that on Twitter, please, please link me in so I can be a part of the thread. Uh, but yeah, which one would be first? Ngāpapi, for you. Well, I wouldn't. I, don't, I won't even say it in Māori, but I'm going to say OT. I see. And I think everyone gets gets the the message. I I think I've always refused to say say it. Call in the Ministry for Children. Yeah. I refuse to call them because they are not, never have been, and never will be. Yeah. yeah. But um, there's probably a whole list. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's yeah. for one, and I'm not sure I should have answered it because that person was anonymous, you know. But, but that's okay. <laughs> no, I think that's a, that's probably not a surprise to most people yeah. online here that that would be uh, the number one hashtag yeah. removal wish list. Yeah, and that's um, not a criticism of the people that gave it, but I it's um, well maybe it is. It's not intended to be a criticism of the people that put that name there, mm -hmm. but it should not be there. Mm -hmm. Well, as we've said in many times in other webinars and in you know movements like Hands Off Our Tamariki and the Tribunal, um, the organisation has failed to do what that name indicates as its role uh, and continues to fail in that manner. And so, you know, so, so thing that I talk about transforming the gift is the gift can't be gifted really on our part until we have that part has been transformed. Then it becomes that. We can't give it hoping that that will transform it. It doesn't, right. that, well, I don't know, in some universe it might work that way, but I, um, how I think about things in, in relation to what I know about Te Ao Māori, it doesn't, and, I'm, and I don't know that much, I know enough, so it does not work like that. Hmm. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Um, mm. So our time's up for this um, session. Tēnā te mihi atu ki Te whanaunga mō au kōrero i tēnei wā, me o whakāro ki te hui i te ahiahi nei. Nō reira, tino rawi nga kōrero, tino rawi nga rawi mi, nau i whakātu mai ki a tātou katoa i tēnei wā, nō reira tēnei te mihi atu. O tadanaki ki a tadanaki, tēnā koe, tēnā koe, tēnā tātou katoa. So I just want to, you know, again, on behalf of all of us, thank, you know, now, look for that really amazing beginning to our practitioners' cordial, uh, and beginning to take the mahi and and really reflect on resource, not only resources but actually our own praxis, you know, our own relationship between our theory and our practice, and how we can reflect on that and and your integration of all the earlier, um, you know, webinars, how you brought those forward into this, and and that is a real indication of praxis and the way in which the theory and the practice that we've been trying to work at together as a team can really come together really uh, powerfully. And so I want to really acknowledge your opening of this part of the webinar series uh, and to let people know that in two weeks time, we're going to have Professor Bonnie Duran, who's going to be talking about um, indigenous mindfulness in terms of healing uh, in, in context of violence. Uh, and then we're going to be followed by Betty Seal, who's going to, um, talk about the cultural frameworks, Pacifica cultural frameworks uh, that um, she and many others were a part of developing and which really kind of pushed this project forward in many ways. And Betty has been a very sound and um, solid support to us and, and working alongside also Tutama Wahine or Taranaki yeah. and um, Marai and then followed by Marai Barasi who um, is uh, a black woman from London who Betty is currently doing some work with um, with Imkan and they work with black and minority ethnic groups in London so that's going to be and then we're going to round off the practitioner series with Henny Wirangi Kohu one of our own so we're going to do a circle around the world and come back and so we hope that you can share the links and the registrations and come back on uh, for the next uh, 
for the next part of the practitioner kōrero. No reira uh, ngā roki tēnā koe, ka huri uh, ki a koe um, i te aoha nau i whaka, uh, whaka kapi tō tātou hui. Tēnā koe. Uh, tēnā kōrua, uh, tēnā rā hoki koe e te mārai kura nō no Taranaki maunga, uh, tēnā i te mihi atu ki a koe e ngā rōpē kōrua 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 ainei. Ana ka mutu tā tātou nei hui i te karakia. Hikitia, hikitia, hikitia te rungo mai whiti o tēnei o ngā hui topa Tuku, tuku a kia ia, tuku a kia oe, ko ranginui ki runga, ko papatuanuki ki raro, tūturu whakamaua ki a tina, haumi e huie, tāiki. Tāiki, tēnā tātai. Tēnā tātai.